When setting up a new machine, I typically do allow location services, but I usually always turn off the analytic tracking. I don't need it to track what I'm doing and sending statistics back to Apple of everything that I do. No thank you. Here we have a brand new 2018 MacBook Air on first login. Here's the things that I'm gonna change straight away in a new operating system. This is OS Mojave, and it's syncing my desktop right now with my iCloud account. Uh, one of the first new features of Mojave is that you can have stacks. It looks like right click is enabled by default where you can uh, use two fingers and you can bring this up. So that's good, you no longer have to go in and turn on right click, uh, but you do want to turn on stacks. It's one of the key features of Mojave. I don't know why they have it off by default. So turn on use stacks and that cleans up your desktop for you. The next things we want to do is go into system preferences and I'm going to show you the things that I typically do straight away in Mac OS to improve the usability for under trackpad is I wanted to change it. It's a little bit less necessary to change this with the force truck attach pad, but I typically used to always turn on tap to click. So I'm going to try that. So that would be an even lighter click now to open up things. Yeah, now you can just ever so lightly tap it. As soon as you touch it, it'll register as a click, which I am used to. I do want to change my dock. Now, by default in Mac OS, when you have your dock, it acts as a barrier. Your screen doesn't cover up the dock. The dock is a hard delineation of usable screen space, and it's a waste to me. Why would you ever want to use that much of your screen locked off just for the dock? You've bought a laptop that has a extra deep display. Most Windows laptops are 16 by nine, so you get a much more letterbox display. On a productivity machine, it's better to have this almost four by three type ratio or three by two. And I like to get it so the dock is hidden. So you wanna go into your system preferences, go to dock and turn on the automatically hide and show the dock. Immediately now, when I go back to my browser, I can use that extra space, which makes a big difference when you're looking at pages. And then when you want the dock, all you have to do is hover down to the bottom and your dock comes back up. The other thing that I like, and this is personal preference, is the magnification. So if you click on magnification, now when I hover over items, they balloon up. And that's just a visual flare that I like. By default, it's off, where when you hover over, everything stays static. But I like the magnification effect, so we'll turn that back on. The other thing I like to do is just change some of the general settings where my accent color, I prefer the orange accents. Again, personal preferences. And in Mojave, you have now a dark mode as well, which does look very nice on the retina display. And in some cases that just looks odd and I don't like it. So I am gonna be using light for now. You have limited color choices when it comes to your accent colors. You can also hide the menu bar if you really want to. You can make that upper menu bar go away as well. So you can use 100% of your screen real estate. But I always choose to leave the menu bar open because it does provide useful information all the time, including a lot of commands that you cannot find elsewhere are up in these menus. So it's always good to have your menu bar uh, showing just because you might forget if it's hidden away that you can do extra things. One of the other things you might want to do with a retina-based Mac display is to go into your display settings and take a look at the scaling. So right now it's set to default for display. A roundabout way of them hiding what the display is actually doing. So if you click on scaled, now you actually get to see what it's doing. So by default, it looks like it's 1440 by 900, which is what the old MacBook Air was. But if you click on this version, it looks like it's 1680 by 1050, which, I may keep that, that's gonna increase the, oh wow, well, that made my dock really weirdly big. That's an odd bug. If you go for the more space, your dock becomes big. Yeah, I probably have to go back to dock and adjust these sliders independently of your size and magnification to get the look that you like. Play around with your display settings. It's something worthwhile to go into. Now, Night Shift is new where I did not have that on my old MacBook and I used Fleur instead. So I may play around with that. It is a nice option where you can schedule it to sunrise and sundown where it will warm up your display and, and reduce the blue light effect for when it's getting near uh, 
near bed. On the desktop, you may want to go into Energy Saver and tweak your settings for now. And this new laptop, I am going to leave it at the defaults and see what it's like, but uh, you can tweak that around as well. It's worth a worthwhile setting to go into. Now you may want to go into Siri in your control center and turn it off in the menu bar. Siri and Spotlight side by side up here, I feel like is a little redundant. So to me, I'm going to turn off Siri in the bar. And then when I want to search, I will just use Spotlight, which is my typical method of searching for things. And with these new MacBooks, they are activated to be Hey Siri compatible. So it'll always be listening. Now they took out the time left uh, a year ago, but you do, but you can turn on show percentage still, where then it will show you how much percentage of battery you have left. The other thing to note is that when there are apps using significant battery, it will show you this now. So in the notification pane, I do like to add a couple of widgets. I like to always go in and add the calculator. I do find to use the calculator in here quite a bit. So I'm going to add calculator, Oops. and they'll just throw that in here somewhere. So you can add and remove whatever ones you like. Then you click done. Yeah, so it's always handy to me to have a calculator right there on the side. One of the main things that I do when I get a new computer is to immediately use whatever default browser comes with the machine, whether it be Safari or Edge, and download Chrome. <laughs> Why do I download Chrome? Because Chrome has all of my life in it. It has Google Sync, so it, it hides in all of my Google accounts, all of my Google data is in Chrome. All I've just noticed that is incorrect is the date and time. When you get a new Mac computer is that usually this is set to Cupertino time, so go to your date and time preferences and change it to your time zone. It is set to use my location, but it doesn't know it yet. So to turn off the automatic setting, then I can choose Toronto because it doesn't know where I am yet. So I'm going to set this to Eastern Standard Time based on Toronto. A little thing you have to do in order to get it to display the time properly. Because it's not going to pick up your geolocation on a laptop. Check for updates. You can go into Software Update and just check to see if there's any updates to your operating system. So there is a supplemental update to the operating system available right now, which I should download, as well as four app updates. Now one of the personalization things you may want to do is go into your desktop and change your background wallpaper, of course. Use your own picture, or there are included wallpapers in Mojave. Ooh, some nice colorful wallpapers showing off the retina display. Yeah. Choose a cool wallpaper that you like. Something else I do is related to the finder. There is lots of finder tweaks that you can do. In the sidebar, things like the tags I don't need to see tags. Go under Finder, Preferences, and on the sidebar, this is where you can turn off, instead of just hiding them, I like to turn them off completely. Like tags, I never ever tag my content. If it's in here, I, you know, I never do that. But I do like to add in things like movies, music, pictures to the sidebar. Okay guys, so if you enjoyed this, hit that like button. If you're new around here, subscribe. If you want to talk to me, leave a comment down below. And thanks for watching. If there's other tests you want me to do on this new MacBook Air, let me know. I'm seeing if it's worth a keep. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.